Let me take a moment on behalf of the entire committee to convey our deepest sympathies to the family, friends, and co-workers of those 11 individuals lost on that fateful day. On April 20th, an explosion and fire occurred in the Deepwater Horizon drilling rig, which BP was leasing to drill an exploratory well in the Gulf of Mexico. The rig was owned and operated by Transocean, the world's largest offshore drilling company, and was under contract from BP. On April 22nd, the rig capsized and sank to the floor of the ocean, resulting in oil leaks from three separate locations among the twisted wreckage. The world is wondering, what went wrong to allow explosive gas to shoot out of the drill pipe on the deep water horizon causing the explosion? We heard Chairman Waxman discuss theories of what may have gone wrong in the well and what went wrong on the rig. I'd like to take a few minutes to discuss issues related to the blowout preventer, the BOP, which was the fail-safe system to cut off the flow of oil and gas to the rig. In his testimony today, Mr. Lamar McKay, the president of BP America, says that blowout preventers are, and I quote, intended to be fail-safe, end of quote. But that didn't happen. The blowout preventer used by Deepwater Horizon rig failed to stop the flow of gas and oil. The rig exploded, and an enormous oil spill is now threatening the Gulf Coast. We know that the blowout preventer, the BOP, did not properly engage. The BOP has multiple rams that are supposed to slam shut to pinch off any flow around the drill pipe and stop the flow of oil from the well. There are also shear rams in the BOP that are supposed to cut and seal the pipe to prevent oil and gas from flowing. The question we will ask is why did these rams fail? Our investigation is at its early stages, but already we've un uncovered at least four significant problems with the blowout preventer used on the Deepwater Horizon drill rig. First, the blowout preventer had a significant leak in the key hydraulic system. This leak was found in the hydraulic system that provides emergency power to the shear arm, or to the shear rams, which are the devices that are supposed to cut the drill pipe and seal the well. I'd like to put on the screen a document that the committee received from BP. This document states, leaks have been discovered in the BOP hydraulic system. The blowout preventer was manufactured by Cameron. We asked a senior official at Cameron what he knew about these leaks. He told us when the remote operating vehicles tried to operate the shear ramps, they noticed a loss of pressure. They investigated this by injecting dye into the hydraulic fuel, which showed a large leak coming from a loose fitting, which was backed off several turns. The Cameron official told us that he did not believe the leak was caused by a blowout because every other fitting on the system was tight. We also asked about the significance of the leak. The Cameron official said it was one of, the, one of several possible failure modes. If the leak deprived the shear ramps of sufficient power, they might not succeed in cutting through the drill pipe and seeing the well. Second, we learned that the blowout preventer had been modified in unexpected ways. One of these modifications was potentially significant. The blowout preventer has an underwater control panel. BP spent a day trying to use this control panel to activate a variable bore ram on the blowout preventer that is designed to seal tight around any pipe in the well. In other words, pinch off the flow of oil. When they investigated why their attempts failed to activate the bore ram, they learned that the device had been modified. A useless test ram, not the variable bore, bore ram, had been connected to the socket that was supposed to activate the variable bore ram. An entire day's worth of precious time had been spent engaging rams that closed the wrong way because it was wired wrong. BP told us the modifications on the BOP were extensive. After the accident, they asked Transocean for drawings of the blowout preventer because the modifications, the drawings they received, did not match the structure on the sea floor. BP said they wasted many hours trying to figure this out. Third, we learned that the blowout preventer is not powerful enough to cut through the joints in a drill pipe. We found a trans-ocean document that I'd like to put on the screen, and it says, most blind shear rams are designed to shear effectively only on the body of the drill pipe. Procedures for use of BSRs must therefore ensure that there is no tool joint opposite the ram prior to shearing. This seemed astounding to us because the threaded joints between the sections of drill pipe make up about 10% of the length of pipe. 
If the shear rams cannot cut through the joints, that would mean the so-called fail-safe device would succeed in cutting the drill pipe only 90% of the time. We asked the Cameron official about the cutting capacity of the blowout preventer on the deep water horizon. He confirmed that it is not powerful enough to cut through the joints in the drill pipe. He told us that this was another possible explanation for the failure of the blowout preventer to seal the well. And fourth, we learned that the emergency controls on the blowout preventer may have failed. The blowout preventer has two emergency controls. One is called the Emergency Disconnect System, or EDS. BP told us that the EDS was activated on the drill rig before the rig was evacuated. But the Cameron officials said they doubted the signals ever reached the blowout preventer on the seabed. Cameron officials believe the explosion on the rig destroyed the communications link to the blowout preventer before the emergency sequence could be completed. In other words, the emergency controls may have failed because the explosion that caused the emergency also disabled communications to the blowout preventer. Still, the blowout preventer has a dead man switch, which is supposed to activate the blowout preventer when all else fails. But according to Cameron, there were multiple scenarios that could have caused the dead man switch not to activate. One is human oversight. The dead man switch may not have been enabled prior to installing the BOP on the ocean floor. One is a lack of maintenance. The dead man switch won't work if the batteries are dead. The dead man switch is connected to two separate control pods on the blowout preventer. Both rely on battery power to operate. When one of the control pods was removed and inspected after the spill began, the battery was found to be dead. The battery in the other pod has still not yet been inspected. There also appears to be a design problem. The dead man switch activates only when three separate lines that connect the rig to the blowout preventer are all severed. The communication, power, and hydraulic lines. Cameron believes the power and communication lines were severed in the explosion, but it is possible the hydraulic lines remained intact, which would have stopped the dead men switch from activating. These are not the only failure scenarios that could impair the function of the blowout preventer. The Cameron official we met with described many other potential problems that could have prevented the blowout preventer from functioning properly. Steel casings or casing hanger could have been ejected from the well and blocked the operations of the ramps. The drill pipe could have been severed successfully, but then dropped, but then dropped from the rig, breaking the seal. Or operators on the rig could have tried to activate the shear ramps by pushing the shear ram control button. This would have initiated an attempt to close the ramps, but it would not have been successful. The shear rams do not have enough power to cut drill pipes unless they are activated through the emergency switch or the dead man switch. In fact, we uncovered an astonishing document the Transocean prepared in 2001 when it bought the blowout preventer from Cameron. I'd like to display the executive summary of this document. It says there are 260 separate failure modes that could require polling of the BOP. According to this report, the predominant failures included ram locking mechanisms. How can a device, how can a device that has 260 failure modes be considered fail safe? The problems with the blowout preventer extend to the procedures for testing the device. CEO Transocean, CEO of Transocean, Stephen Newman, says in his testimony, and I quote, "We have no reason to believe that they were not operational. They were jointly tested." by BP and Transocean personnel as specified on April 10th and 17th and found to be functional. This assertion seems to be contradicted by a document prepared by BP on April 27th, one week after the explosion. According to this document, and I quote, the blown out protector stack emergency systems are not typically tested once the BOP stack is on the seabed. What this means is that while some functions of the BOP may have been tested in the weeks before the explosion, the emergency systems, including the dead man's switch, and the leaking emergency hydraulic system were unlikely to have been tested. After the Alaska pipeline and Texas refinery disasters, BP promised to make safety its number one priority. This hearing will raise questions about whether BP and its partners fulfilled this commitment. The safety of its entire operations rested on the performance of a leaking, modified, effective blowout preventer. This is the first of what will certainly be multiple hearings into this disaster. 
I look forward to a frank and spirited discussion with our witnesses today. I ask unanimous consent that documents are referred to be entered.